to the Women of the Bible podcast. I'm Erin Davis, and this is season one on Elizabeth. And we are going through the Elizabeth Bible study. You are here joining us. We are in the Revive Our Hearts living room. I hope you are in some warm, cozy living room somewhere with some great friends who love the Word of God as much as you do. I hope there are snacks. I was going to say, like, with some chocolate and coffee maybe, yeah, some brownies. Like Somebody with the spiritual gift of hospitality really makes me want to study the Bible more. So I hope you're holding something warm to drink. Um, I hope you have good friends nearby. But even if you don't, um, I hope you are walking through the Elizabeth Bible study with us. I have some friends joining me who have been walking through the Elizabeth study with me. And if I were teaching this in my living room, we'd have a quirky question. We just would. Uh, So my quirky question this week is really not that quirky. Okay. I want to know your favorite color because I feel like, I like it reveals that. something about your personality. <laughs> I think there's all it's kinds of studies. To it, I think so. it, it's supposed to. It Yeah. So uh, why don't you start us out? Tell us your name and your favorite color. Okay. My name is Meg. And I was always a pink girl. But okay. lately, and I don't know if it's just a new season of life, but it's sure. olive green. Okay, it's, that's it's very color, specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the color my sister is going, don't buy any more olive green stuff because you're you going to be much. all olive green. Too much olive so green. So I actually managed not to wear it today, but that's my color you right now. You got a little now. on that's your scarf. My, there's a, Podcast there's, listeners there's a can't hint. see you, but... There is a hint. Olive green's Shows good. Colors. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't feel discouraged neutral. by this, but that was my granny's favorite color. Mm. She no, loved that's, that's a good thing. I would love to. But she had excellent taste. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. If I'm dressing like your granny, I'm... I'm a wise You're good. woman. <laughs> Doing something right. Okay, olive green. My name is Alejandra, and I love blue. Mm. blue. I like blue. Is that because you grew up on the beach? I grew up on the beach, so any shade of blue, I love it. You know? Does your house have a lot of blue in it? My house doesn't have a lot of blue. It has blue a lot room. of green, olive yes. green, actually. Interesting. It's just we live in the mountains, so okay. mountains and blue kind of don't go too well. So our I listeners can look up more information on all of <laughs> yes, us, but exactly. you grew up in the Dominican. Yes. And now live in Canada. Exactly. So in Canada, we have gray skies, at least where I live sure. on the West Coast. Um, but in the Dominican, as soon as you wake up, you know, the sky is, is mm. bright blue, and you go to the beach, and it's turquoise, and you see all the shades of blue as you... Oh, and look in the ocean. So I would hey. like to propose that we have our next blue. Bible study podcast you know in the what? Dominican. I think Let's that go. sounds good. <laughs> Let's do it. That I think so we're nice. good with that. Well, I'm Erin Davis. I'm the content manager at Reviver Hearts, and my favorite color is yellow. Mm. Yellow. I, I love, love yellow it. roses. Yes, um, yellow roses, yellow, yellow flowers color. of any mm. kind. I used to have foods. a yellow kitchen, really bright. Yes, <laughs> I did too. I regret that. <laughs> but it's good. But you think it's light, it's happy, yeah. and it's it can go wrong. It can yeah. go wrong. Yeah. Uh, I, I accidentally painted my whole house purple once. I was trying to, I was oh. going for gray, mm. oh. but it went, Somehow. it went real bad. And okay. my husband was painting oh. one wall and he Are said, sure? he said, She's painting the whole house oh. purple. So, Should I bring this up? That's or? right. But anyway, it happens. So we're not here to talk about paint no. colors or colors in general. We're here to talk about Elizabeth. That's and right. I hope you've been walking through the study with us. All of Elizabeth's stories contained in just one chapter mm-hmm. of the Bible. Um, it's Luke chapter one. It's That's a quick right. read. And um, we don't often think about Elizabeth in terms of disappointment, but that's what we're looking at her Mm. for in this study, because Mm. what we know is that Elizabeth faced primarily the disappointment of infertility for Mm. a lot of years. Mm. I know there are going to be women listening to this podcast that have that exact same same kind of Mm. disappointment. Um, And so they're really going to identify with Elizabeth. But she also has a husband who comes back from work and can't speak anymore. So she's got a husband who's not what she expected. Yeah. We can relate yeah. to that, right? Yeah. Um, but my husband's perfect. Your husband's perfect. Yeah. My husband I'm sure is also yours perfect. too. Yes. And mine is oh, not. Good. Mine is about? practically <laughs> perfect in every way, but he doesn't like Mexican food. I told you that. Okay. It, it's okay. Just cook something else and, and he'll be perfect. And he doesn't drink coffee. That's okay, too. I don't Is either. It? And I'm not still sure. perfect. So <laughs> he's Aaron's really, still getting really used to that one. <laughs> perfect, but not perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, so she has a husband that's not who she expected. We can identify with that. She has a family planning situation mm-hmm. that is not what she had expected. She's um, disappointed in what she thought her life would look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just in that one chapter, we see multiple layers of disappointment. Mm-hmm. And aren't our lives like that? Yeah. I mean, if we could take the time to talk about where each of us is facing specific disappointments. And if we could list them, we would find lots of layers of disappointment for us. And so we see that in Elizabeth's life, some of that um, 
gets remedied, Mm -hmm. but some of it doesn't. And so this session of the Bible study is hope for a disappointed world. Hmm. And we're in a world that's disappointed. Now we're out there, right? Right. It's like you're not going through it, just you and your family seeing it. Yep. But there are expectations that people have and there are expectators sure. that are watching your every move yes. yep. on how you handle this situation. Yep. What we did some informal polling of lots of women in writing the study and preparing for this podcast. And one thing we heard a lot articulated, especially among young women, is that their social media feeds yes. are a source of disappointment. I was just going to say the same thing. Even and though they know better. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And in disappointment, one of the best things I think you can do is to stay away from it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because disappointment starts to feel like your identity sure. very fast. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Elizabeth wrestled with... I can't have a baby, that's who I am in some way, shape or form. And then when you're faced on top of that with the expectations of social media and how it should look and how you should be presenting yourself and, um, oh, I just think it makes it so much harder. Yeah, you can feel pretty great about your outfit or your hair and then you you post a picture around and you feel, oh. (laughs) Post a picture and then you get Yeah, or you decorate your home and you feel like, man, this looks really great. And then unfortunately, because of our constant access to everybody Mm. else's homes, we can feel like, oh, I miss Our access to their homes on the best day. Sure, on the the best best day with a filter. Yes, yes. Yes. Um, So I think we are in a culture of disappointment um, and we are, I think, ambassadors of hope in that. Mm-hmm. Elizabeth gives us that example. So the scripture memory passage for this week was Romans 5.5. 5. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to read it to us. It's, it's such a great anchor. Uh, the CSB version says it this way. This hope will not disappoint us mm-hmm. because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So sure. We may face disappointment mm-hmm. in every other sphere of life, mm-hmm. but the hope of Christ, mm-hmm. it will never disappoint us. Mm-hmm. It will never fail us. I, um, I was traveling recently, and uh, I'm a head down traveler. Okay. Earbuds in. I don't want to talk to <laughs> yeah. you. Um, uh, it hurts my neck. Yeah. And so I was <laughs> trying to put off that vibe, right? Mm-hmm. And the woman next to me, she didn't pick up on the vibe. So she started <laughs> talking to me, and she told me this, really horrific story about yeah. this deep pain that her family was going through. And I didn't know what to say. Yeah. It was so horrific that it sort of stole my words out of mm-hmm. me, which is saying something because I talk a lot. So I said this to her, are the promises of God true? Yeah. And she said, every single wow. one of them. Wow. She was experiencing a hope that does not disappoint. That's right. In a hopeless situation, mm-hmm. she was experiencing a hope mm-hmm. that does not disappoint. Um, and it's I've thought of her so many times. So in contrast, what messages do you think? We talked about social media. It could be through social media or lots mm-hmm. of different ways. What message do you think the world teaches about hope? Wow. Or disappointment? Or how to find hope in disappointment or how to find relief from disappointment. I mean, what other messages are we hearing other than there is a hope that doesn't disappoint? Wow. Fix it yourself. You have the power to overcome things. Whatever comes your way, you have the power to overcome. You have the power within yourself to fix it. Mm -hmm. You can follow these steps and you will make it through. Yep. Um, It also, I think, as women, it encourages us a lot, the world, to look at what Compare ourselves, you know, what does she do Mm -hmm. to have that body? What does she do to have that husband? What does she do to have that job? Sure. Um, And and we tend to click follow button in Instagram. Yeah. Just off of those things. You know, and feed off those things and think you're actually doing it just because you're looking through it. Sure. Uh, So I think it's it's just that challenge of, you know, you can do this on your own or by looking at someone else and comparing yourself to them and dressing like them. Yep you might become yes. sure that. Yeah. Meg and I, we're friends. Alejandra and I are real <laughs> friends, but Meg and I live in the same town. Yeah. Yeah. And so we get to have coffee together pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. And we've had a lot of conversations. Meg, you're 22, right? Yes, I am. 22. Um, and we've had a lot of conversations mm-hmm. about how you feel you're being discipled by Instagram in some ways. Mm-hmm. And discernment is yes. something that's yes. difficult for you because there's, and difficult for others. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's messages coming at this you generation. Constantly. That's sure. the so struggle. 
Let's pretend we're back at our favorite coffee shop. <laughs> we like the Starbucks. In yeah. Yeah. Um, we do. And let's have that conversation for our listeners about sort of your awareness of the challenge of discernment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it comes down to we have access to information everywhere. Mm-hmm. The bottom line is every day I can access a thousand opinions at a click of a button. Sure. And what I think my generation is not being taught along with that is how do you filter that with discernment? Mm -hmm. What do you allow to sink into your heart and what do you send on its way? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think just for myself, I've seen that struggle in my marriage. if, if we are really struggling in a certain area or, or, you know, if we're floating along and things are wonderful, but then I read an article or I see oh, yeah. a blog <laughs> post about yeah. you should be doing this with your mm-hmm. husband or yeah. if you were really a godly couple, you would be doing Bible studies this way mm-hmm. or you'd be going through this book. And that's when I start to go, oh, I must be doing it wrong. Mm-hmm. I got to take must, action. I got to take action. Mm-hmm. I've got to fix this. And Aaron, you're always... Um, good to point me back to the word of God. And that is, that is the filter that I, that I must be returning to because that's the only way I see, know what does scripture say? What does God's word tell me? Um, and then is this article in line with that or is it, is it extra? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but then what do you do with the extra? Sure. You know, because there is, there, there's, there's a so lot of good of information out there. There's so yeah. much good extra. Um, so how do you discern what mm. is good to really allow into and your And I heart? think that's, that's the bigger problem. We have so much information mm-hmm. on one square yes. thing. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we are exposing ourselves because yeah. it's not necessarily that certain articles are good or bad or certain sure. information, you know, it's useful. Um, and in Revive Our Hearts, we have a lot of information yes. that is very and useful. that's a good thing. For sure. women. Um, now, if you try to read it all at once mm. or if it's you like drinking just... drinking from a fire hose. Exactly. Yeah. We're not prepared for that. Sure. Yeah. And so, it's mindless too. Then you're yeah. not necessarily using that exactly. filter because you're just taking it all yeah. in. Yeah, giving it like... even misapply it sometimes. I just turn to it for mm-hmm. stress relief. Exactly. Like, <laughs> this day was hard. Bored. This yeah. moment was hard. Yeah. This relationship yeah. is hard. Yes. I want to be numb. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And instead of yeah. saying yeah. to the Lord... Yeah what we talked about in an earlier session. I wouldn't choose this, Mm -hmm. but I embrace it. Or asking the Lord to see it through his eyes or even Mm -hmm. praying for him to be glorified. I just... I just want to numb it. Yeah. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to think about it. Um, And I don't see that bearing any fruit in my life. I think one message that really concerns me, um, and I'm seeing it lots of places to women, is you are enough. And you mentioned it in another way of saying it is you have it within you. You You can fix this situation. You can remedy it. And the idea that I'm enough to to stand between me and disappointment, no, I'm not. Or even I'm enough to handle disappointment with grace. No, I'm not. No. Um, or I'm enough to minister to others in their disappointment. No, I'm not. Yeah. I am weak and broken yeah. and mm-hmm. desperately in need of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And um, I need that hope that doesn't disappoint yes. that, that we just talked about um, to remind me of that. Mm-hmm. Um, That's huge. Though, it is. Because... We will take it on ourselves sure. to be the perfect person sure. so the world can see Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's how I represent him. Exactly. By doing it all right. Sure. Doing it, you know, the cleaner home, the perfect yes. fit. The Handling this with everything grace. Everything eating <laughs> organic. I will not you know, complain. I will not. Exactly. Yep. And we can put that extra pressure on ourselves and sometimes we lack the vulnerability. Um and we're not showing the gospel. The gospel yes. came through the pain. Yep. And that's how the yes. world will see it. The gospel came th- to bring the love yep. and the forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think we bypass those details yep. just to get to the point of, you know, standing yes. strong sure. and being yes. well sure. and, and well, proving. The, the gospel is a two-sided coin. I mean, mm-hmm. one side of the coin is the sin, yeah. Yeah. is the brokenness, is the suffering, is the death. And until you see that kind of co- yeah. side of the coin, when you flip it over and see Christ's redemption yeah. on our behalf, yeah. um, then then that makes sense. But I think you're right. I think we want to fast track through the hard. And, and the Bible calls us ambassadors uh, in multiple places in Scripture. We are to represent Christ. We are ambassadors mm-hmm. of Christ. We're ambassadors of hope. And we want to embrace that call. Um, 
But that doesn't mean... But ambassadors of Christ. Ambassadors of Christ. You right. know, when I represent, sometimes I could be an ambassador of myself. Sure. Mm -hmm. And of my, my plan sure. for my life. Oh, how, yeah. how do you get to have three children? Well, let me tell you. Sure. <laughs> this is how you do it. Sure. This is how you make babies. Right. You know, these are the steps. These yeah. are the steps. Right. And this these are the days. Did. This is how we did. And it worked for us. And that's why you have sure. this beautiful family. Hey, right. no. Why don't we point to Christ? Sure. And why don't we understand that? I, I am an ambassador of Christ. Right. And what that brings into my life. Yep. And I think the more we understand that, wow, the deeper it just goes and you're like, oh my goodness, this is, this is huge. Yep. You know, yep. this has to take over every, every area of my life. And I need to portray Christ, yeah. mm -hmm. not my name. Yep. Well, or in my that plan. chapter of Luke 2, it goes on to say that after she has John, mm -hmm. um, the people come and say, oh, the Lord had mercy on her. Sure. And I love that Elizabeth was not an ambassador of hope by going around and saying, I had the baby. Yeah. Finally, the I answer came. Yeah. I'm on the other side. Didn't I do awesome? Yeah. I prayed so hard. Yes. I stayed faithful. Yes. I've done that. You know, just sure. Like, that was not how she was sharing yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. She yeah. shared it in such a way that people said, oh, the Lord had mercy Even on the her. name, you know, yes. she could have chosen another name sure, or whatever. Sure, she could have. Just kind of telling people, no, this is the name because this is what the Lord yep, said, that's you right. know, like her dreams. She and, was firm and in that. You know how hard to name a child after yeah. someone, like that you just know. Yes, no. sure. That's a little hard for me at least. But you think, you know, this is what the Lord said and she just went with it. We only see, uh, hear Elizabeth's exact words three times mm -hmm. in the text. And all of them, except for the naming of John, she says the Lord. Yeah. So anytime she's talking, she's talking about the Lord. Yeah. And when she's talking about the naming of John, she's being obedient to her husband because she yeah. trusts her husband is obedient mm -hmm. to the Lord. So it's one of those women, and I have them in my life too. It doesn't matter what they're talking about. They're talking about they the bring Lord. Christ in. They're talking about the Lord as they tell you about their Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And they're talking yeah. about the Lord as they tell you about their plans for vacation. That's and they're true. talking about the Lord as they talk about going to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And it just is who they are. It's okay. the fabric of their being. Mm -hmm. And those are ambassadors yes. for Christ. Exactly. Those are ambassadors for hope. And he's the one that's going to bring that to the world. It's, sure. It's him coming to the world. Sure. You know, and bringing that <laughs> light. I don't bring light. the hope. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm not he the hope. She has it. I can quickly just be, my, my world can be just popped like a balloon and all hope goes. Sure. But because of him, we have that hope that we talked about in Romans yep. 5. Yep. A hope that does not disappoint mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are ambassadors of hope to a hopeless world. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I need reminded of how dark it is out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. To those who don't yet know Christ, who are yeah. trying to navigate the same disappointments as us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Without um, the hope. Without the hope. Oh. And just how crushed they must feel mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And how I am an ambassador of hope to them is not by pretending I don't face disappointments. Exactly. Because I do. Exactly. Um, how I am an ambassador of hope to them is that in the midst of my disappointments, um, I worship the Lord. We'll talk about that in a future session uh, about how we are people of praise. Yeah. We bring the sacrifice of praise mm -hmm. even in the midst of disappointment. And they need that. Scripture mm -hmm. tells us to always be prepared to give an answer for the what? For the, the hope, hope within that's us. within us. So sometimes I can get nervous about gospel conversations. We were um, traveling as a family recently, and we were at an aquarium. Mm -hmm. And this sweet little buddy who wasn't mine, I'd say he was 10 or 11, was next to me, and he knew every fish in the tank. <laughs> and he was telling me, well, that's a this kind of shark, and that's a that kind of shark. And I thought, <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have to share Jesus with this boy. Yeah. And so I said, who do you think made all those sharks? Yeah. And he said, well, Jesus, of course. <laughs> and it was a really sweet, short awesome. gospel conversation. Yeah. But it was me trying to ob be obedient yes. to that call yeah. to always be ready. And be available. And be yes. available. And, and he was ready things. with his answer. Yeah. He was ready Hello? to share the Jesus. Yeah. Jesus made Obviously. the shark. Yeah. I, I, I probably would have faltered if it had oh. evolved from there. But um, I think we can get nervous about talking about Jesus and we... I get stage fright a little yeah. bit. I'm worried I'm going to garble the verses. I'm not going to walk through the Romans road yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, and scripture doesn't say mm -hmm. memorize the Romans That's road. Right. It doesn't say wear one of those bracelets with the beads and memorize, yeah. although those are good things to do. Yeah, but it says start with your neighbors. Love yes. your neighbors. And just be ready yeah. to have a, a conversation about hope. And so when that neighbor comes to you mm -hmm. discouraged or defeated, and they yeah. will, yeah. Um, 
or you see that woman out and about and she yeah. is having a rough day or it's the coworker in the cubicle beside you that doesn't know the Lord. I hope you're laying a foundation of prayer, mm -hmm. but that moment yeah, you have that to. they need hope, yeah. Yeah. you've got it. Mm -hmm. You've got what they need. Even if you're going through disappointment yourself. Sure. Because Maybe that's especially. A huge, exactly. That's sure. a huge difference. Don't just take your disappointment and think, you know, I, I have to keep it to myself. Sure. I have to share this and comfort other people. Even if I'm not feeling so well, yep. just reach out and yep. hug that person and do something for that person that is actually practical. And sure. leave it. Do with them what you would like someone else yep. to do to you. Yeah, I if think going we get to afraid because we think hope has to be this fluffy, yeah. cheerful, rainbow sure. idea. And mm -hmm. um, I think more often than not, it's listening. And like you said, doing that practical thing of, hey, I made you dinner tonight. And, and mm -hmm. then you have the opportunity to share the deep hope. But it doesn't have to look like... You know, you're just yeah. bringing them up to, to cheer them up. Sure. Or bring them the to purpose. church. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or get them to the Bible study. Right. Hey, start, start with serving. I'm right. a compassionate baker. I found mm -hmm. there are a few <laughs> things that cinnamon rolls can't exactly. add comfort. And just <laughs> that's hard, so here's good. some cinnamon rolls. I'm praying for you. That's how I, I see hope for you. Yeah, that's, that's hopeful. True.